Hello YouTubers and welcome to the Concrete Construction Channel. Today's video we are going to focus on what I call the general contractor scam of the century. We are going to talk about three ways that a general contractor has screwed over their subs job after job and have been getting away with it because they know how to manipulate the system so we'll cover the three ways that they screw you. We're going to cover the ways that you could protect yourself from getting screwed on a job. And I also want to cover one other scam that I see a lot of subs do to private homeowner customers, people who are not in the construction industry. So I wanted to throw that into this whole scamming video. So it's going to be a little long, but we're going to be packed with a ton of information that I hope will help you guys out in your dealings in the future. So guys, let's get into it. Okay, so you're probably wondering how can one general contractor get away with screwing over their subs time and time again? Wouldn't it catch up to them? Now, the first disclaimer I'm going to put in this video is every state has their own rules and regulations. Please check your local laws because laws in New York may, may vary from laws in California, Florida, etc., etc. Now, the first thing that I picked up in my conversation with this general contractor was their payment schedule. They do not want to pay you for 90 days. So that means the last day that you're mobilized on their job, which would be the day that you clean up everything, your wood, your equipment, whatever. And then you will submit your invoice and that will click over the 90 days waiting period to get paid. In those 90 days, in my opinion, and as I heard from other people, they are using that time to screw you over. They already know what they're going to do to you as you're doing the job. So what ends up happening is during the 90 days, they're getting their surveys, they're getting their finals, and they're going for their C of O. Once that GC company hands that C of O to that property owner, your ability to get paid is greatly diminished. So it, if it's even existent. So what could even happen once you put a lien on the property owner, they could even bond that lien if they wanted to. So they could get right around you. And if you were to file a lawsuit, you would have to file it against the general contracting company, not against the property owner. So that could also get expensive because this company, these big GC companies, they pretty much will have a lawyer working on them, working on their payroll 24-7, 365. So for them, it's just cutting someone a check for their weekly payroll. It's no big deal. For you, this could become a very expensive process and you're already out possibly six figures depending on the scope of your work to the job. So the project that I was looking at was nearly, I would say, at least one hundred and fifty to one hundred and eighty thousand, maybe even two hundred, all in, because I would have to provide the machines, trucking out of material, the importing of material, and anything else that goes with it, the labor, everything, soup to nuts, permits, where I'm on the hook for. So I have to pay all of my suppliers within thirty days of their delivery. So I would be laying out all that money and not getting a dime in return. So basically what I'm saying is the first scam, how they get away with this is it just gives them a head start to screw you over. And they've done it to people in the past. And a lot of guys have walked away because it just gets too expensive to go after the GC company. And you really don't have a leg to stand on fighting with the property owner. Now... The second scam that they do to their subs is in the middle of the job, 
what they'll do is they'll come to you. You might be three quarters of the way done or better. They'll come to you with complaints. They'll say that your work is not up to spec. They'll say that your work is substandard to what they were expecting you to do. And this could be total baloney. It doesn't even have to be true. They throw you off the job. So not only do they not have to pay you anything because you got thrown off the job, if you were to turn around and take them to court or put a lien, A, you did not complete your services as per the contract, and B, all they have to do is go to court and say, Your Honor, the work was not up to our standards. I think you would be very hard-pressed to find a judge who's going to find for you if they've got a customer saying that they were unhappy with your work. At the very least, they may call it a wash, and you may walk away with nothing. Anyway, and you still went through all of the expenses of suing them or leaning them. So that is another way that that, that this GC company gets away with it. Because a lot of guys, if they get thrown off the job, even if they, they know, if they turn around and sue, to prove in the court of law to a judge who really doesn't know construction, it's going to be an uphill battle, if not nearly impossible to win. Now... The third scam that they have done to their subs is, and this is the best scam of all, what they do is they take your invoice and they're going to pay you. And it gets to be the 90 days. And then they turn around and say, they give you a punch list of things that you did wrong, or they just list complaints that they had that they had to rectify. And they turn around and say, well, your bill is for two hundred. Let's settle for one hundred and fifty thousand, or they'll say let's take ten percent off the bill, right? So on a two hundred thousand dollar bill, let's take ten percent. That's twenty k. So now what they've done is they not only got paid the two hundred k for your job, they get money on top of that for finder's fee or just running you for the project manager. And they just took 20000 and put it in their pocket. So any money that they beat you out of, they put in their pocket. And for you, the, the subcontractor, you're saying to yourself, well, I still got 180000 I still did okay. You didn't make the money that you should, but maybe you made something. So maybe you'll still work for them in the, in the future, or you'll work out a deal. Not only did you avoid the court battle... You didn't have to pay for a lien, but you're kind of content to the point where you may work for them again. So don't you see how they win, win, and win? They keep you as their sub. You did the job. You got a, Your bill got cut. They made more money on top of you, and you'll still work for them. So there you go. Okay, so you're probably thinking... How can I get around this situation? Now, you don't have to fall into this trap. This trap only works if you allow it to work. So what you're going to want to do is have your own lawyer draw up the proposal for you. Don't rely on their lawyers to do the right thing by you. So the way to protect yourself is, number one, deposit. When the material shows up on the job for you to begin work, you should automatically get money down. There should be no reason that you're supplying material for the job and not getting paid for that. The labor, I could kind of understand, but the material, no way, because there is no way for you to recoup that material once it's really installed. So make it that you get material dropped on that site to begin work, you get a payment. Whatever the percentage of a deposit that you require, they have to agree to. And then you should schedule progress payments. And the progress payments should reflect the work that you have completed. There should be no reason for them to disagree with that. Because if you're progressing the job and you're doing the job well, and they see that you're doing it right, they should have no issue with paying you for the work that is already installed. So make sure that you get progress payments and make sure that they stick to those payments. The minute that they slip and they miss a progress payment, I know it's going to cost you money, but it's going to save you money in the long run because if they get behind on their payments, chances are they're not going to be able to keep up with it. 
and they're not going to give you one big check at the end. If they don't have that money now, then they're not going to have the money later. That could be an indication that this company is in financial trouble and they can't keep up because in all likelihood, their contract with the owner of the land who contracted them to build the project, they're getting progress payments. So as you're progressing and the other trades are progressing, they're getting paid. So there's no reason why they can't filter that money down to you. You're losing any leverage that you may have. If you stop the job halfway through the progress, if the progress payments stop and you stop, that forces everyone else to stop. See how you have the leverage? You have the upper hand there. Now, yes, in the end, the last phase of that project, you're hanging out there a little bit. But the thing is, you would not be hanging out for the entire scope of the job. Okay, so it is customary for the final payment, the last draw, be withheld until you have satisfied all of the inspections, any tests that may have had to be conducted by the architect, the engineer, or anyone else involved with the project, or if you had to pass a city inspection or, or any tests that had to be conducted. So once you pass or have satisfied all of those requirements, you would get the final draw of the 15 or 20%, whatever you agree on, 10%, whatever. Now, the reason why I say you have to leave that open is because you have to give your customer the comfort of knowing that they hold some leverage over you if you should not complete the project properly. And if they paid 80% or 75% of the tab so far, you should feel comfortable and confident that you are going to get the final draw because if they were honest and upfront with you the whole way and they were making their payments on time, there was no reason for you to feel that they would change their tune now unless there was something wrong. So for all the people who are going to comment down below and say, oh, well, on these jobs, it's customary that you don't get paid until you pass an inspection or you have to wait, well, you're 100% wrong. I have worked on numerous commercial projects. I have worked on many major residential projects, and there has never been a general contractor, builder, or property owner who has requested that I do not get a red cent until I'm 100% delivered for 60 or 90 days. That has never been asked. Now, if you're doing a city or state job, that may be different. And yes, I have heard of it taking up to two to three months to get your final draw, which would be the last payment that I'm discussing, the 15 or the 20%. But nowhere in any time in my career or from talking to people who do this type of work on a daily basis, no one has ever said that this, what this company is doing, this GC, is customary. It is out of the ordinary. And that's why I believe that they're having trouble finding subcontractors. Now, let's get into the biggest scam that contractors will pull over private residential homeowners' eyes. Okay, so now we're going to discuss the most popular scam that a contractor will pull on a private homeowner. And I cannot tell you how many times I have encountered this, that people have fallen for this gimmick. It's the old, give me a deposit to reserve your spot on the schedule and I'll see you in two to three weeks. To the homeowners, or if you're a landowner, you never ever give anyone a deposit prior to them coming to do your project. Now, I don't know how other people work out of the state, but in my area, if there's any time a person asks you for a deposit before they begin work, it's a red flag that there is going to be a situation later in the job. It just, it never ends well. And to me, when I go to do a project for someone like that, I require the deposit when we show up. So when we come to the job, before we put a stake in the ground, 
a bobcat breaker point through your old concrete or start digging out the hillside that you may have, we will not do a thing until you pay us the deposit and you sign a contract. It's just the way that I operate and I have never, ever had an issue with anyone up until this point. And I could tell you that people have come to me that they gave a guy a $5,000 deposit. They paid the guy in full before he even showed up. I mean, you would think this would be common knowledge to not do, but people do it. And a lot of these guys have the gift of gab and they could just talk some people into anything. And they, what they do is they create an urgency on your end to pay them so you're on the schedule. Well, if you don't give me a deposit, it could be four months before I come back. Well, so what? Get somebody else then. You don't need to use that particular contractor. Any contractor that is reputable, reliable, doesn't have any requirements like that. They uh, would be perfectly fine coming to your project and getting the deposit when they begin work. If And if you say, oh, well, we had to order special order material, then they require you to give them the deposit for that reason. Why don't you go to the store, you order the material, and you pay for it? If that's the case, then the contractor has no money out and you know that that material is going to be delivered to you. And in all likelihood, a supplier is not going to scam you like that because they'll give you a receipt that they ordered it and took your money. They're not going to do, you know, they're not going to defraud you like that. It's just not going to happen. So to me, that's the best way to get around it. So don't let a contractor create that urgency on you. Remember, you could always go somewhere else. When they show up to the job, you give them that deposit as soon as they come, and you'll be fine. I mean, listen, there's no guarantee to make it that you won't get scammed in another sense, but at least it will give you some leverage over the contractor. And it'll give the contractor a reason to show up and come and do the work. So, you know, hopefully that works out for both parties. Guys, I hope this video has helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, like or dislike, please leave it down below. Have you ever been scammed by a general contractor? Leave your experiences. So this way other people who maybe are just starting will see your story and hopefully learn from it. Guys, I hope we have a very happy and healthy and profitable new year. So till next time, please be safe, take care, and I will talk to you guys soon.